MET for the hip flexors, in particular post-isometric relaxation or PIR. The hip flexors, a term that gets bandied around all the time in the fitness and health world. But what muscles do we actually mean? And as you can see, there's actually quite a long list of muscles that partake or assist with the action of hip flexion. So lots of places where things could be tight if we find a client who struggles to get into hip extension, for example. The rectus femoris and the psoas are the most commonly discussed. Key difference being rectus femoris crossing both knee and hip and psoas crossing the hip below. But also iliacus, the tensor fascia lata, pectineus, adductors longus and brevis, gracilis and sartorius also play a small part in hip flexion, so all can be affected when we're doing this technique. Well, let's look at the rectus femoris and the psoas a little closer. So the rectus femoris originates on the front of the pelvis at the anterior inferior iliac spine or AIIS. It travels down the front of the legs, it's the most superficial quadricep muscle, and inserts into the tibial tuberosity via the patella tendon. Its actions are to extend the knee and also to flex the hip. So looking at that knee extension, when the leg is straight, we're going to get less action of the rectus femoris on the front of the hip. Whereas when that knee is bent, it's putting that rectus femoris on more stretch, so it will have a bigger action at the hip. So this is key when we look at our MET position for affecting the rectus femoris more precisely. So stretching the rectus femoris, that would be to extend the hip and also to flex the knee. So that is why the knee is bent or flexed when we're applying MET to the rectus femoris. When we're doing our range of motion test, both active and passive, normal range is only about 15 degrees of hip extension, but sometimes even less than that. So again, establishing whether or not this needs to be applied for your client. Note knee is bent when we're testing the rectus femoris. Looking at the attachments for the psoas, it originates on the transverse processes of T12 to L5. It's in the anterior portion of that thoracolumbar fascia. It travels down the inside of the spine and inserts into the lesser trochanter on the femur, so crossing the hip. So when it shortens or contracts, its action is to flex that hip to bring that femur closer to the middle of the body. Its action is to flex, so its stretch is to simply bring the hip into extension. So note the knee is straight or extended when we're trying to test the range of motion of psoas. And again, normal range of motion is about 15 degrees of hip extension. So we will apply MET with both a bent knee to target rectus femoris more specifically, and with a straight knee, which is a more general MET to affect the hip flexor group. So let's take a look at techniques to both the rectus femoris and the psoas using PIR, post isometric relaxation. So here's MET for the hip flexors in side lying. Now we're going to be working on this top leg with the bottom leg straight. If I move this leg, our client's going to be unstable. So first step is remove the pillow, please. Knee up, thank you. Place it on a clean surface. Now, can you bend your bottom leg so both knees are stacked on top of each other? Stable. Now I can take this leg and test range of motion. Now, we can do both rectus femoris in this position or psoas. A little bit like the gastroc on the soleus, it depends on what's happening at the knee. So the psoas works solely at the hip. So if we straighten the leg, so rectus femoris is in a short position, so the tension's taken out of it, now I'm testing and actioning the psoas. If I wanted to target rectus femoris as the hip flexor, then I would simply bend the knee and come to this side because by putting the knee into extension and putting rectus femoris onto a little bit of stretch, now it's more likely that it's rectus femoris I'm targeting in terms of hip flexion when I move into extension. So let's start with rectus femoris, so active range of motion test, can you bring your uh, knee back towards me Danielle? That's it, so bringing her hip into extension and relax, and then a passive range of motion test. 
Okay, so quite tight through there. Her leg wants to move and her lower back. So in this position, bring your knee up into my hand. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, big deep breath in. Out and relax, lovely. And bringing it back to the next barrier point. Hold for 10 seconds. And when you're ready, we'll repeat one more time, but you might do it three or four in your client. Bring your foot into my hand, that's it, just meeting my resistance. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, big deep breath in, out and relax, lovely. And bringing that leg back. And once we reach that end point, we're going to hold for 20 seconds. All the while we're checking no compensation, no movement above the hip and that we're really working on the hip flexor itself. 20 seconds is up, we're going to retest. So Danielle, can you bring your hip back towards me into extension, bring the knee back with it, lovely and relax. And then passive. So looking for an improvement in range but also an improvement in quality of movement. Now, if I wanted to do so as, same action, same technique, relax the leg, now soft knee, her lower leg's on my opposite hip. Now I'm looking at psoas, where she has greater range of motion. So for Danielle, rectus femoris was definitely where we wanted to work. But for someone else, it might be into psoas. Same principle here. She will bring her leg into flexion by resisting into my hand. And that's where we'll contract. And as she relaxes, we'll move to the next point. So repeat three, four times and hold for 20 seconds at the end. And remember, Always retest range of motion, active and passive.